of things. Uh, first of them is next month on February 18th, uh, Wednesday, we have uh, finally confirmed a lecture and seminar with Pablo Pianche, our correspondent and journalist writing from Donbass, Ukraine. So, all of you who are interested in this topic are very much welcome to come again on February and see Pablo. Cool. At least we hope so, will be an author of the book by this time that we're going to publish. Greetings from New Russia is the work entitled of the book. Um, that's the first announcement. Second is that all of you are welcome to participate in thinking about future topics of lectures. And in order to do so, there is a mailing list that's going to be passed around by that lady in the back. Uh, mm -hmm. That's Agnieszka, who is a coordinator for the program. Yeah. And please. If you want to. And there is also contact to me. If you had some ideas, if you are interested in some topics you think it would be good to discuss during the seminars, also feel free to contact with us, to contact with me. We are here like all the time, and we would like to also invite you to be part of this of this process of working on this seminar. Yeah, don't forget to leave an email. And uh, last but not least, uh, if you haven't yet, please visit polyvocritique.org, our English website for new articles, interviews, and all that's going around. We are trying to do as much of it in English. We don't do it all yet, but please. See to it that we do. Thank you, and finally, give you my check. Have a wonderful evening, and that's the moment for you. <laughs>
uh, doesn't bring uh, doesn't bring us closer to understanding what really happened in Poland. And I think that this is especially important for the left, uh, as uh, as when you are on the left or you were on the left in the 90s, you were thinking in those terms, okay, capitalism came here, and now all those things uh, are happening, uh, and we have to do that because communism collapsed. But uh, what we can do is to stick to some ideas of the welfare state, which were present here before 1989. Yeah, so we should defend somehow the remnants of welfare state. It, and, uh, now, uh, in nowadays, uh, you can see uh, what are the outcomes. Uh, we don't have uh, much welfare state. Um, uh, we don't have uh, uh, too many remnants. Uh, we are spending uh, for uh, social protection 19% of uh, uh, GDP, which is one of the lowest rates in the European Union. So, uh, and my idea is to uh, give you a proposal for interpretation of what happened in Poland, no, uh, not starting in 1989, but uh, uh, starting from 1970, and you will see, uh, uh, you will see uh, my arguments for that. Uh, I think that establishing new narrative on Polish history, new periods, new breaking points, new landmarks, is a way to <coughs> regain some, some kind of agency, some kind of... Uh, um, control over over events. If we don't have a uh, history of transformation, we'll be unable to, to change its, uh, um, um, its track. Okay, let's move further. Uh, my basic idea is to start in the 70s, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, usually uh, 70s uh, um, are considered to be the moment in which uh, former regime went a bit uh, more tolerant, a bit more prosperous, but then it was uh, due to, uh, to Western money and to Western credits. Uh, then 1980 came uh, and the big crisis and of course uh, um, establishment funding of the movement of solidarity and all the regime uh, in the eighties went in, into a crisis, which uh, in, uh, which uh, ended up in uh, in nineteen eighty nine in nineteen eighty nine, which was obvious, which was obvious because the system was not uh, uh, really efficient, etc. I think that uh, establishing nineteen seventy as the uh, as the breaking point, uh, is very important when it comes to um, the deep change which occurred either in the West uh, um, uh, or in the East. I mean, in both, uh, on both side, uh, sides of uh, Iron Curtain. Uh, in the 70s, you have neoliberalism coming uh, more and more into um, uh, 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 changing the structures of Western societies. And in the East, you have a deep change in um, imagination, also in the Central Europe. Uh, how, uh, how I can prove it? In, in the 60s, the main frame of reference here in Poland, uh, when it uh, comes to social structure, was equality, uh, and uh, fast radical social change, which can lead to. Uh, when you look at sociology in the uh, in the sixties, you will have the, uh, the uh, the development of ideas of how to construct a just and egalitarian uh, society, uh, and why it is even why it is better than capitalist society there is a guy called uh, Veselowski. Uh, he was uh, one of the most brilliant polish sociologists uh, of that time and he was presenting that in poland you have this disparity between the uh, 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 between the elements of status uh, in the west 
uh, you have you don't have this disparity. If you earn a lot, you will have the prestige. Right? Yes, uh, you are uh, recognized by other men. Uh, in Poland, you will see that those who are recognized do not earn so much. So you can be uh, very well recognized well recognized that like you can be a professor but you don't uh, you will earn less than some uh, physical manual workers for example miners this is a proof that we created socialist just society and uh, when Wesołowski, this is extremely interesting when he reflects on peasants he says Oh, yes, we still uh, do not have um, uh, collective uh, agriculture. Yeah? We, we are still uh, having these remnants of capitalist uh, economy. But look, we are trying to give them, uh, first of all, machines yeah, that we are creating uh, in the countryside, uh, this, those, uh, um, uh, uh, those sites with machines they can use, and we are really engaged in organizing equal policy to uh, improve the life chances of their children. Like we are really investing in schools in, uh, in the country, etc. Uh, uh, in the same moment, uh, um, Kuron and Kozelewski <coughs> were creating, uh, the, this Wesołowski was a very mainstream sociologist uh, engaged in party and he was presenting some official um, legitimization policy system. And uh, in the same moment, Kuron and Modzelewski created their, uh, 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 their famous letter to the party. Uh, as you remember, uh, Daniel Convenit, uh, when he was arrested and asked uh, what is his name, he said Kuron Modzelewski, uh, uh, just because he knew that, uh, that letter, and he uh, was thinking that he's on in the same uh, in the same struggle. Yeah? He's uh, fighting the same struggle against uh, um, the rule of bureaucracy and in the name of just society. And Kuroni and uh, Mozales, he referred also to Marxism, uh, but uh, and they were criticizing uh, the party rule, the bureaucracy rule, uh, as new capitalist class. Uh, what is interesting that for uh, Either for Wesołowski um, or for Kuroń and Mozelewski, the, uh, the reference to just society was obvious. Uh, so uh, uh, either you were on the side of the system, you were trying to improve it, to legitimize it, or you were in, uh, on the side of um, you, were, you, were trying to, uh, you were trying to criticize it. They went to, to the prison for uh, three years. Uh, you were using the reference to justice and egalitarian imagination. This all ends in the 70s. Like old guy, all the guys who were involved in official Marxism were changing their perspective on what, how society should be understood and what is society. All the old Marxists, uh, almost all, the, the most prominent ones, uh, changed their perspective and they started to uh, investigate management. All, uh, though for, for example, those who were involved in the studies of the councils, and the councils were one of the, uh, one of the uh, elements of the imaginary uh, of critical Marxists, they gave up studying uh, councils, they started to investigate how to organize modern uh, society by management. Uh, we have complex society. We don't, do not have a, a class struggle. Uh, we have to organize in a proper way, for example, circulation of information. Or we have to deal with pathologies of uh, organizations. We have the same problems as they have in the West. Uh, those management studies were only a part of the larger <coughs> picture. Uh, uh, in, uh, in science, uh, there were some other uh, ideas of how to, what, what, is, what is the important issue for the scientists. Uh, the, I will uh, briefly uh, present you the most important ones, uh, one. Um, uh, 
First, uh, personality. Personality was a point of reference for psychologists, but also for uh, sociologists. They, that was something new. Uh, there is a one a classic in, uh, in, uh, in psychology, Janusz Wejkowski. He, uh, he was very close to the party. In fact, in the 80s, he was, uh, uh, he was a member of political bureau uh, in, uh, in the Central Committee. Uh, uh, he was investigating personality. Uh, and now he is a classic in psychology. Uh, the other uh, topic was, uh, were the lifestyles. There, were whole, there was a whole bunch of sociologists investigating lifestyles, how people deal with the choices uh, in an in a, in a, in a economy which offers uh, more goods, uh, how people uh, try to make a style of what they can find in, the, uh, in their everyday life. So it was it was something, and uh, other, uh, other elements uh, or other issues uh, investigated by those by those uh, uh, by those uh, scientists were um, uh, were minorities and problems of um, of national identity. Um, in the official language, there was a shift. Uh, we are not building. Uh, we, we are entering a new phase of socialist uh, modernization um, and we are starting to talk about active society. Active society, and it happened in the Central Europe but also in the, uh, in the Soviet Union. Uh, and on the other side, we have the emergence of the language you uh, for sure, uh, the language you uh, for sure know, uh, the language of anti-politics. It, is, it was the language which, um, uh, which established a clear division between totalitarian power and uh, civil society. Civil society was something good, uh, it was something that is worth of defending, uh, and it was the, uh, uh, the engine of social change. On the other side, there was a totalitarian state which was uh, just repression. Um, and uh, the will to subordinate uh, all the people to some uh, uh, to some um, unrealistic ideas, and um, you can say uh, uh, when you hear about uh, civil society language and this anti-politics, you think that it, it was something uh, special, something uh, totally new, something. Uh, Invented by Adam Michnik, by Jacek Kuran, by uh, Leszek Kołakowski. But in fact, it was a part of a deeper social change. Like in the 60s, when you were uh, in opposition, you were using the language of class uh, and just society. In the 70s, you were referring to active society. This is a part of the same, uh, of the same um, uh, let's say, cultural frame. And there were also, of course, uh, other elements in popular culture, you could uh, have uh, Coca-Cola. Uh, in the popular culture, there were some important new elements which were related to the middle class. For example, uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the very popular series, uh, um, The Man in Its Forties, uh, really popular one. Like, uh, in the 70s, there was a real uh, popular culture in Poland, you see, it is not like this club we have you know, today. Uh, um, in this series, uh, the main character had problems with uh, fidel fidelity in marriage, uh, with smoking, with how to uh, uh, keep shape, and yeah? how to, may, uh, how to uh, participate in sport activities. It was something new. It was a, a like totally new world, or totally new practices. Uh, my idea about how to analyze the, uh, uh, the transformation starting from the 70s is like that. First, uh, we have four periods. Uh, this is my main, uh, my, my main idea. Uh, we have four, uh, four periods. Uh, first one is the 20 years of hybridization. It is the moment in which uh, uh, institutions of socialist society, like, for example, a big uh, nationalized uh, industry, uh, uh, coexist 
with new institutions which are of the market origin. Uh, I will uh, show it to you in a moment. Uh, the uh, other period starts in 1988, and this is marketization. Uh, this is the uh, uh, introduction of the market rule in uh, many spheres of, um, uh, of social activity. Then we have a, a change in 1987, uh, and this is a moment when we have this neoliberal wave, neoliberal wave of reforms that we uh, that the consequence. Uh, the consequences of which we are still having here, like for example in education. And uh, from 2004 we have uh, something that I can't name in another way as uh, Europeanization. It is, uh, uh, I, I don't want to uh, uh, have a dispute over, uh, 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 over the names of the period, but uh, uh, I think that, the, that they fit somehow to, uh, to, the, to the context of what happened in Poland. Uh, first, uh, uh, first period. Uh, I have uh, already uh, tell, uh, I have already uh, told you a lot of it, but I would like to uh, uh, put an emphasis of, um, on uh, several elements of it once more. First of all, it is the emergence of the middle class culture. It doesn't mean that uh, the strong middle class was established as a class, but uh, New whole new culture, like in this series, uh, came up, and uh, uh, it it was recognized. All the people looked at it. Uh, it was uh, more and more spread. It circulated. It, it uh, established new Im new imagination. For example, when uh, 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 in in reference to uh, education, in in the sixties, education was uh, considered to be a path of uh, organizing equal society. You know, how to... Uh, 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 this was a... Uh, uh, this was the mean how to jump into, uh, into social structure. Like going uh, to, to, to a proper school was a way of how to go from the, uh, uh, from the country to the city, how to go from um, being a peasant to being a, um, to being a worker. Uh, in, uh, in uh, in the seventies, uh, the school, but it is it doesn't only mean that uh, it was considered only school, in school, but also it's uh, related to the whole imagination about social structure. The more important thing was the how to compete, how to compete between, uh, how to compete in, uh, in in the institution and how to be better than others, and uh, there was a. Um, in the 70s, there was established whole anti-egalitarian language. But it was present, for example, in the very famous uh, weekly Politica, which still appears in this uh, important form. In the 70s, they made <coughs> the whole critique of egalitarianism. Like, we don't have equal uh, stomachs. Like, if we uh, are focused on equality, we will be unable to foster uh, modernization. As uh, modern societies are those societies in which individuals uh, are creative, in which individuals are active, in which individuals uh, are able to invent new things, engage in new activities, etc. A whole language of uh, whole language of um, of the critique of egalitarianism was established in the 70s. I'm not saying that it was dominant, uh, but it was important and it was present in the public sphere. It was not some kind of underground uh, discourse uh, or, or underground oppositional discourse. No, it was a part of official discourse. Um, uh, very important thing was the bill on private commerce. As, this, uh, as it, uh, it was introduced in 1974, as it introduced a whole new uh, rules uh, in uh, organizing um, uh, commercial activity. This bill on commerce was related uh, with introduction of, of the possibility of hiring people who are not part of your family for doing business. So uh, it changed whole uh, ideal uh, or it um, undermined whole ideological um, uh, 
friends of socialism. Uh, first of all, it was uh, uh, like in the in the sixties. Uh, it was obvious that you can have small artisanal uh, business, but you can hire only part, uh, people from your family. You cannot hire workers because when you hire workers, you are um, um, uh, simply speaking, you are um, making exploitation. And it is impossible to exploit people in socialism. You can be this petit bourgeois artisan, but you cannot hire people and uh, extract uh, the work from the extract value, etc. In the 1974, it changed. And it was a, it was possible to hire people to do to do to do a business. I'm not saying that uh, it uh, it was equal to uh, total marketization, but it established a. Uh, island of the new uh, order in the um, uh, in the body of um, of socialism. Uh, there was, of course, uh, also informal market, informal market um, uh, for goods which were uh, um, transferred, which were uh, bought in the West and uh, sold um, sold here. It also changed uh, um, the habits of people and the uh, and the imagination. Okay. Uh, now let's go to uh, to marketization. Uh, in nineteen uh, in the popular imagine uh, in the popular discourse or in the in the public sphere, it is all um, it is almost sure that you will hear that in nineteen eighty nine we uh, the new market will really started, but in fact it was introduced by the communists. The communists decided about marketization in 1987. And they introduced uh, bills uh, that enabled people to uh, organize uh, free commerce in 1988. It was the, the government of, uh, of Rakowski. And uh, uh, after 1990, um, um, after 1990, we had uh, new bills which established uh, um, free uh, free market on, on capital, but it was a uh, it was a, uh, it was a part of a longer uh, evolution. Uh, uh, for sure, free market was uh, um, was the uh, was not uh, related deeply with uh, with 1989. It was the uh, it was the idea of, of communism how. Uh, one should organize uh, social relations, uh, and it was, of course, uh, the the idea of how to deal with the crisis, which was uh, which was uh, which was deep in the in the eighties. Mm. Another thing uh, that we can uh, relate with marketization is the establishment of uh, free market on, po uh, on politics. Uh, it seems to be a, a bit a metaphor, more, but uh, when we think about uh, um, about uh, democracy, uh, we can uh, think about it in the term, in the uh, in the market terms in, in Poland yeah, but, uh, or elsewhere. Like uh, when we establish political um, um, political uh, liberal democracy, you have the market for. Uh, uh, for politics, uh, who search uh, the popularity of the people who sell their uh, their programs, etc. Uh, what happened uh, during this marketization uh, process was uh, very important: the, inst the industrialization, liquidation, cancelling of many uh, uh, um, um, of many uh, plants of many industrial sites. Uh, rising unemployment, rising uh, inequalities, and poverty. It was really a strong and fast process. Uh, and uh, uh, in 1992 and 1993, we had uh, a popular reaction to that. Uh, we had a peak of social protests, uh, which were mainly protests uh, in, the, uh, in the industrial uh, sites. Uh, those who protested uh, were workers. Uh, those protests were uh, uh, were one of the reasons uh, why uh, former opposition lost their power. 
like uh, uh, those governments which were related to the solidarity movement uh, um, uh, lost their uh, support and in 1993 the new uh, post-communist uh, left uh, uh, went to power and uh, people uh, or many people uh, thought that this will be uh, uh, Somehow the, the correction or uh, yeah, the, the uh, correction of uh, of market reforms, but uh, maybe they were. Uh, I think that uh, people were very naive and they forgot that uh, uh, the communists were the one who uh, introduced market reforms, and they were not willing to make a deep uh, correction of uh, of reforms. And in fact. Uh, they got involved into preparation of new uh, new deals that were introduced in 1997. Uh, I would like to skip to this uh, to this period. Um, it is uh, it is not uh, uh, recognized to think about 1997 as, as a very important uh, moment breakthrough or landmark. Uh, I think it is, um, it should be, uh, the focus should move on this date. Why? We had a uh, deep change in uh, organizing education, pension reforms, healthcare reforms, and uh, administration uh, uh, and organization of administrative rule uh, in Poland. So, uh, uh, and it was uh, it was like that, that. Those reforms were organizing according to certain scheme. Like uh, education system was changed, uh, and uh, from uh, uh, former educational system in Poland was organized like this: eight years of um, uh, primary school. Uh, four years of high school and then uh, studies. Uh, after the reform, we have uh, we have six years of elementary, um, uh, 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 three years of uh, secondary, then three years of uh, high school. Now uh, three years of uh, uh, of bachelor and two years of master. You can see that. The time of study of uh, being in education system is uh, partitioned in a smaller uh, um, in smaller units. It is a very good way to uh, to stimulate individualism. Uh, first of all, you have the exams after the uh, after uh, ending each uh, each part of the educational uh, system, and you have to uh, make choices. Uh, uh, in, uh, in the old um, system, you had uh, to uh, choose only twice. Now you have to, uh, to choose in uh, every moment, every, uh, every three years. Uh, it really changes how people relate to uh, institution, how they think about the institutions, how they uh, uh, they do not want to critique, for example, uh, to organize, to involve in, in the critique of the system. Uh, because it is easier uh, to uh, uh, just to change uh, the, not to change the institution in, in which you uh, you are involved, but to change the institution by uh, picking up the other, like changing school, uh, changing studies, etc. Um, uh, I think it was uh, it was very uh, very important. Uh, the, uh, uh, and it stimulated individualization. In, we had also economization of, uh, uh, of the healthcare. Uh, it was uh, uh, related to establishment of uh, uh, new uh, forms of payments, uh, payments for, for procedures, not for uh, not the general uh, uh, not the general subsidies uh, to the hospitals, but uh, um, um, organizing payment by Procedures. Uh, it is uh, uh, now. If you want to uh, now, when you uh, uh, when you look at com commercialization of the system, all the uh, all the software uh, for commercial uh, commercialization is uh, uh, is already done. Uh, you don't have to make a deep change. Uh, uh, all the um, all the system is uh, is prepared. Uh, 
We have also uh, one of the most uh, important uh, bills uh, after 1989, uh, we had labor market derivation. Uh, now in Poland, one third of the workers uh, work part-time in flexible terms. Um, this is due to that uh, reform. It was, uh, uh, it was introduced, it won't be uh, um, uh, um, uh, it, it, it is obvious for you, it was uh, introduced by uh, left-wing uh, government and uh, post-communists. Uh, post uh, we have also, uh, in this period, we have further weakening of, uh, of the working class. Uh, more un unemployment for them, uh, loss of, uh, of the jobs, uh, loss of the union, uh, union power. Uh, after 2004, uh, we have inversion of many trends. Like, uh, uh, we have decreased inequalities. It is something uh, uh, different to the dynamics which uh, occur in the Western uh, Europe, uh, when you have uh, increase of inequalities. Uh, we have decrease of uh, unemployment and the real wages increase, which is uh, uh, quite impressive. As, as you uh, know, uh, the wages in the West are rather stagnant from the uh, beginning of the 90s. Uh, uh, after 2004 in Poland, the real wages increased by, uh, uh, as, I, uh, as I remember, 30% between uh, 2004 and 2000, uh, 2011. Uh, we had a, reverse, a reversal of um, pension reforms. Yeah, uh, all those uh, privatized uh, uh, idea was uh, dismissed by uh, um, uh, by Donald Tusk and his uh, uh, minister, minister of Finance. Uh, um, and uh, new discourse appeared, fostered by, uh, by Donald Tusk. This was a discourse of no more painful reforms. Uh, now when you uh, look at TV and uh, see uh, Prime Minister Kopacz, she's going back to the discourse. Uh, she's saying we have to cancel uh, uh, some, uh, some minds. Yeah? We have to uh, make a restructurization. Uh, this was something Donald Tusk uh, cleverly uh, avoided. <laughs> yeah? uh, um, I mean, uh, at least uh, in, the, in the discourse, no more painful reforms. Uh, we had uh, also uh, important uh, big emigration. Uh, there are estimations that uh, more than two, uh, two million people went uh, went abroad, mainly uh, young ones. Uh, but uh, it had uh, influence on the labor market. It reduced pressure for the uh, labor market. Uh, uh, it was uh, good for the workers who stayed here. Uh, this is one of the uh, this is one of the um, reasons why we had this real wages increase. Not not the only reason, but uh, uh, one among uh, others. Uh, we have also uh, two interesting processes: globalization and ruralization of the working class. Uh, uh, what does it mean? Globalization means that more and more workers work abroad. Uh, physical workers, uh, uh, people from, from the working class, work abroad in Germany, in Great Britain, in Belgium, etc. Uh, it doesn't mean that they moved there uh, permanently. Sometimes yes, but sometimes they go only for nine months, for example, <coughs> or half a year, and they go back. They still keep, they, for, the, for example, they keep their, uh, their houses, their apartments, uh, they keep their, uh, their households here. For example, they leave uh, kids with uh, grandmas and grandmas and go uh, to work um, to work in Belgium for several months. Uh, 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 I'm uh, mentioning it uh, as we have very uh, simplified vision of the working class. Uh, as some, uh, as a, uh, sometimes working class is uh, presented as very inactive passive, yeah, they, uh, but in fact they are really uh, mobile, yeah? they, they really search for new opportunities and they, uh, they really, uh, uh, they really, if we can somehow profit out of globalization. And we have the, uh, um, the process of ruralization of the working class, which is uh, quite obvious for the, uh, 
uh, for people who study working class, uh, when you visit uh, uh, a plant, it is almost uh, a plant, for example, food plant. It is almost uh, sure uh, if, it, if it is in a smaller city. Uh, it is almost sure that a majority of workers will not live in that small city. Uh, in this small city with the middle class, administrative officers, um, uh, teachers, etc. Uh, majority of workers live uh, outside in small villages, and they have a car and they go uh, to the to work by car. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, this ruralization is important to understand why uh, the. Uh, uh, why we don't have many social protests uh, of the working class nowadays. Yeah? They, uh, they use other means uh, of how to reproduce themselves. For, for example, there is a, a, a well-developed subsistence economy. Yeah? Uh, like, uh, if they uh, live in the country, they have also uh, their vegetables, their hands, uh, uh, their field with, um, uh, um, with cabbage, etc. So they, they are using it uh, uh, in order to, um, uh, to make life uh, cheaper and easier. Uh, uh, for the end, uh, I would like to present you the, uh, uh, the chart, uh, which uh, uh, which is a representation of the changes in social structure in Poland uh, from the beginning of the, uh, of the 90s. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, focus on uh, red and, uh, and green lines. Okay? Uh, do you see it? Is it yeah, uh, uh, the, um, the green line is the, uh, is, is the share of skilled workers uh, among the working uh, <coughs> among employees uh, this is this means like uh, when when it is 35 percent in 1992 uh, it means 35 percent of the work uh, of the working power of all working power are uh, skilled workers uh, in 2005 it was uh, um, 27 percent uh, so we can see a uh, constant decrease in the uh, in the share of working class in the um, in the social structure, and uh, now the red line. Uh, you are, you can see that we start from ten percent uh, of the of the experts, which means mainly the uh, the middle class, the middle class of public and private sector, uh, and we end in two thousand. Uh, in, uh, by almost 25%, this 23 is something. Uh, I think that this is one of the most important uh, um, important um, processes that occurred in Poland uh, in the last uh, two decades. Uh, it is the, in fact, it is uh, uh, the rise of the middle class. Uh, it, uh, it really changes the balance of power between the classes. I mean, we uh, cannot neglect middle class uh, as a new actor uh, in politics, in culture, in social life, in the labor market. Uh, we cannot stick to, uh, to the narrative that we have still a uh, huge uh, working class, or everyone uh, who works is a working class, and um, uh, play the old games of uh, class conflict between exploited workers and uh, capitalists. I think that we have to uh, reflect on the role of the middle class in uh, shaping uh, the reality of Poland. And um, I don't... Uh, um, I'm not telling uh, here that the uh, working class, I mean the physical workers, are not here with us anymore. Of course they are, almost 40% uh, uh, of the working force are physical workers, but uh, they are uh, not rising class anymore. They were in the 60s, maybe even in the 70s in Poland, but uh, they are not uh, rising class anymore. Uh, 
uh, their position uh, on the labor market is weakening. The unemployment um, uh, is strong among the uh, working class. They, they are not very unionized. Of course, miners are, you know, those in the big industrial sites, they, they are unionized, but others are not. Uh, uh, we conducted a research on, uh, on physical workers working in, uh, in the plants, but also in other um, on other positions, let's say, simple works uh, in the shop. And what was uh, striking to us, it was that uh, we asked them uh, about the role of the unions in their life. Most of them, uh, we said that I don't see any role of the unions. Uh, or some, some of them even asked, what are the unions? Some of them knew that uh, the unions is something that is impossible to, uh, um, to establish in their plant, of course. Uh, but in the same moment, they were saying, no, there is, no, they should be, of course, but I'm not interested. It was astonishing, but it is how, um, how, how it is. Uh, uh, we should not neglect it, or we cannot shut our eyes on, on reality. Mm. Uh, uh, but, I think that uh, we can think about the middle class as a new uh, militant class and a new uh, strong class. Uh, I think that, um, uh, and I would like to emphasize strikes in education in 2008. Uh, there were uh, almost 12,000 uh, strikes in education, of course, because it were, uh, those strikes were organized by a strong uh, teachers' union. And teachers were the group uh, uh, which was especially liked by Donald Tusk. Donald Tusk gave them money, uh, gave, increased their wages. Uh, he was saying that, that this group must be recognized, uh, not only symbolically, but also uh, um, 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 by material uh, input uh, into education and their wages. So, uh, in fact, uh, um, Donald Tusk knew that there is a new dangerous class, and it is not a precarious, as Stanley says. Uh, Stanley says that precarious is a new dangerous class. I think that in Poland, uh, new dangerous, if there is any dangerous class, it is a middle class, and especially middle class from the public sector. Uh, I would like uh, also to, um, uh, to tell you a bit about the white city. It was the, uh, the protest of the nurses in front of the Prime Minister's uh, office in 2007. And uh, this protest uh, lasted for six weeks, I think, and it, it heavily contributed to the crisis uh, um, uh, of support of uh, Kaczynski's uh, role. So, uh, uh, and he, uh, he neglected uh, middle class, no? and it had uh, its consequences. Uh, I think that middle class is, uh, uh, is able to present their interest in terms of universality. I mean, uh, nurses, uh, when uh, uh, organizing a protest in front of the uh, Prime uh, Minister's office, they were saying that they are not fighting only for their wages. They are fighting uh, for the... Uh, for the patient's uh, good. They are trying to establish uh, good health care. They want to be paid uh, because they, uh, not only because they, uh, they are not paid well, but uh, they want to be paid uh, and not search for other work uh, after they leave hospital. They want to work in one place. They're only in public hospitals, not uh, mix their uh, their work between public and private, which is uh, um, which is um, quite often uh, in Poland. So they were saying, we are here to fight for a good public service for all. This is something that. Uh, Workers are not so, uh, it, it is not that easy for workers, as we see here nowadays with miners. It is not easy to present uh, the interest of the miners as a universal, uh, as a universal struggle. 
It is possible, but they don't uh, do it. Uh, it is possible, but uh, it is not that uh, it is not happening. Mm. <coughs> and I think that uh, today, uh, uh, what are the prospects? Uh, I think that uh, uh, the possible crisis uh, uh, brings uh, instability to the uh, to the public service, and probably uh, uh, it, uh, it will. Uh, end up with the proposals to make some cuts. Yeah, if there is a crisis, of course, if there is a crisis in Poland in several, uh, um, several uh, years. Uh, uh, cutting in public services uh, is the most uh, probable scenario. Uh, I think that uh, middle class uh, can be the force which will counteract this. Also, the, if we have a conflict, it will not be uh, Organized by the uh, between the workers uh, um, of the let's say uh, food plants, but uh, it will be between nurses, teachers, policemen, and uh, um, and the state. Mm. And I think that the new element also in the uh, in the Polish landscape are the new city movements. We are uh, which are also uh, organized by the people uh, from the middle class. And one of the uh, one of the elements or features of their uh, their programs is that uh, we should abandon the discourse of financial or, or architectural modernization. We should stick to the needs of the people. So, uh, if you want to have uh, a good city, it doesn't mean that you have to organize winter Olympics in it, like uh, it was the proposal in Krakow. Uh, you have to deliver the good public service, like for example, good uh, kindergartens, good schools, uh, um, uh, not something uh, for uh, for uh, international capital, rather something for local uh, local habitats. Uh, I think that th those elements of the middle class activity, middle class discourse, are uh, present also in, uh, in new city movements. Uh, now, uh, I think it, it, it was almost an hour of my uh, of my talk, uh, and right now I would like to ask you uh, to ask you for discussion. Uh, uh, maybe you want to uh, pose a question to me, or have some comments. I see uh, at least three people who want to uh, comment, or five. Uh, so I will give you a microphone. Yeah, the, 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 I think we can collect the uh, comments and then I'm Javier Arnold. Uh, um, thank you very much for this. It was very interesting. And I actually have a couple of questions. And, uh, oh, the first one is related to, to the way you make this periodization of, 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 the, uh, of the presentation. Uh, um, and, and what caught my attention was, was the first, the, the starting point, the, this hybridization, I can call it, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it very well. Um, um, because uh, it, it may be argued that uh, in, during the 1970s, uh, uh, the social movements were also influenced by, by, by other movements in Hungary and in, in Czechoslovakia. So uh, I, I'm not sure if, if, if the starting point is, uh, is correctly uh, set in the 1970s for, for Poland, since they, there was this, uh, uh, this kind of movements uh, in, in, in their neighbors. So I think the best way to see this transformation is always seeing in a comparative perspective, because uh, in, in, that, in, in that way, we can see if, Polish, if, if the Poland was actually uh, a special and particular case in this transformation within Eastern, Eastern and Central Europe. And the second question is, 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 is uh, uh, um, regarding to, 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 to the last period, or to, well, to the current uh, state of affairs, is, is that, do you think there is a, a sort of backlash of, of, of political ideas in, 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 in you know, academic circles and, and also uh, um, government circles, for instance, 
uh, this this group of, of, of people like Basarovic, they're, they, they're still living and, and they're still thinking that the, 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 the shock therapy reforms in the 90s were very success, successful. So it, it may be also uh, uh, the appropriate policies to continue in, in, in the future in Poland. And, and, and that, that would be an also the deterioration of the voter state in, in, in Poland. So I, I would like to know more about uh, you, uh, your take on, on this. Mm -hmm. can, I, uh, can I answer uh, immediately? As, uh, uh, maybe it's, it's more uh, effective. Uh, uh, that's uh, uh, your point in making the comparisons between uh, Poland and other uh, countries is very, very good. Yeah? Uh, it should be done, uh, and uh, I can uh, do it uh, very improvisably. Uh, not, the, not in a very complex and uh, um, ordered way, but uh, for sure that there was uh, some kind of uh, uh, coherent uh, dynamics or uh, same dynamics between uh, Poland and Hungary. That there are uh, uh, there are sociologists from Hungary like Seleni, uh, which were presenting more or less the, the same and analyzing the same processes, like this hybridization, uh, uh, introducing informal markets. Also, Buraboy uh, was, um, was doing it. If, uh, do you know Buraboy is a very well-known uh, American sociologist of work? Uh, so uh, I think that in Central Europe, we can observe more or less the same, uh, the development of informal markets, this hybridization. But, it was not. Uh, I mean, it was not happening uh, elsewhere. Like in GDR, we have something uh, different. I think it was in 1976 where nationalization of private commerce uh, and uh, happened. Yeah, the, some uh, some plants were still private in the 60s and even in the 70s, and they were nationalized. So uh, it, it doesn't mean that it happened in all. Uh, post uh, communist, uh, all, all, uh, sorry, uh, all uh, communist uh, countries, uh, for, for sure, uh, for sure not. And uh, uh, when it comes to this uh, backlash, I remember the, uh, that in, in the end of the 90s, uh, and uh, during this neoliberal uh, period, uh, Leszek Balcerowicz was like a god. Yeah. With, like, uh, Leszek Balcerowicz was the economist by the capital letter. Uh, like uh, it was, uh, it was the voice of economy. Now he's only one of the experts, uh, one of the voices. So uh, I think that the, the change is uh, is deep uh, and for for better uh, for, for worse. Uh, uh, no, I think that uh, we have uh, right now uh, we have. Uh, different uh, ideological landscape. I think it's, it's not only, uh, 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 I think it, it is not only related uh, to some deeper uh, changes in policies, but it is also related by, uh, with, with the change of the structure of the media. Like uh, in, uh, in uh, in this marketization period and uh, neoliberal period, we had very centralized traditional media, and uh, they were much more uh, closed, uh, closed uh, than uh, than today. Now we have uh, many TV stations in general. It, it really changed uh, a lot. It really changed a lot, uh, and I think that today we have rather uh, an open discussion about. Uh, the direction or the, the model, uh, models of the economy. Of course, I, I agree that uh, those uh, market voices are stronger, but uh, they are voices among others. We don't have a total hegemony of neoliberalism. Uh, small question. Um, what was the role of the family as an institution in the, this transformation period? Because uh, first, the question is: in the communistic times, 
was Poland individualistic or collectivistic in terms of family relations? And throughout this period, did it change? It is, a, it is a very difficult question, uh, in fact. Uh, usually when we uh, uh, refer to uh, communism, uh, one says that the family was, uh, uh, the, uh, was this institution which uh, saved us freedom and uh, it was the, uh, the place where the state couldn't enter. Uh, it was the place where the uh, normal social re relation lasted. There is a famous uh, passage uh, from Czesław Miłosz uh, in, uh, um, uh, in, his, um, uh, in his book on communism. Uh, he's, uh, he's going through, the, in, uh, uh, through some public space in, uh, in Odessa or in Kiev, and he sees only gray people. Uh, all, uh, gray, uh, all the people are gray and Individuals are but part of the of the crowd, and then he sees a normal family: uh, 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 father, mother, and two kids, and they are feeding the kids. Yeah? Uh, they are giving them uh, uh, them some uh, some fruits. He says he he thinks all oh, the last uh, human family, and uh, what he hears, he uh, he approaches them and. They are speaking Polish, <laughs> so uh, you know we, we have very strong uh, attachment to family. <laughs> uh, yeah. And of, of course, uh, family uh, was important under uh, communism because it organized day-to-day uh, -day activities. Like if you wanted to have a toilet paper, you had to stay uh, in queue for it. For some uh, periods, so uh, you send their uh, their grandma to the queue. Yeah? Uh, the family was a kind of uh, uh, resource that you could use to uh, uh, to survive or to reproduce. Uh, but it also uh, it is also important uh, after 1989 or in other periods, like uh, uh, many people uh, who were. Uh, um, who were working in industrial sites, uh, who were physical workers. After uh, 1988, when uh, the industrialization started, they went back to the country. They went back to the families. And the, uh, and the country, but also the families in the country, were the buffer for, uh, for transformation. They uh, took unemployment and uh, they reduced costs of uh, of transformation. So, uh, and I think that uh, it is uh, it is the example which refers to working class. But it also, well, of course, family is important for other classes as well. Uh, when we think about uh, uh, the when I think about the position uh, um, individuals uh, uh, have entering their adult life. Uh, it is obvious, for example, uh, in Warsaw, that when you are coming from the upper class, you will be given uh, an apartment. It is, it is obvious. Like, uh, parents give you an apartment if you are in a totally different uh, position than the people from, from, uh, coming from outside of Warsaw, you know, or from, from the middle class, which uh, are not given uh, an apartment. So the family, I think that the uh, family is still playing an important role. And it is uh, individuals, individuals, individuals is not something totally opposed to uh, collectivism or family relations. Uh, so the workers went back to the country, to the families, you said. Now, if something like a revolutionary thing happens, can middle class as you said, the of the big class, can they go back from Warsaw to their families again? Is it still strong? That's my question. Uh, uh, that's a that's a very good point uh, uh, and a real threat to revolution. For <laughs> middle class revolution, but I think that uh, they are in a uh, different position. Uh, they have credits. Uh, for their partners. Uh, 
they, uh, it is not only that they can go to the country and uh, uh, have uh, a soup out of this hand which goes around uh, in the playground. Uh, like, uh, it is not that easy for them. As, uh, um, uh, as the middle class is the main uh, credit taker. Okay, um, I have two very short questions. The first is, uh, do we still live in a period of Europeanization, or is it a new period? Uh, for example, due to the fact that Donald Tusk was uh, appointed a president of European Union, so uh, it's a progress for, for Poland. And the second uh, question is, should we introduce the euro? Should we um, introduce a common uh, currency? Why and or why not? It is hard to tell if we are in the new, uh, in the new period. Uh, I think that some uh, uh, some elements of the dynamics of, of the situation are uh, are still with us. Uh, for example, when it comes to discourse, uh, when it comes to the, uh, some uh, discussion about the uh, the purpose of um, of economic life or uh, how to or, uh, about the models of organizing. That we are still uh, uh, in the period of uh, Europeanization. I, I cannot, I cannot see uh, any other dynamics. Uh, that that's, maybe that's, that's easier to see. Uh, um, uh, and when, when it comes to Euro, it is hard to say. I think uh, uh, it, it should not be introduced very fast. Uh, this is my opinion. Well, I, uh, just to avoid the situation of Greece. I think uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, easier credit, uh, more consumption, uh, um, and instability in the balance of trade. Uh, I have two questions. So the first one is: Could you explain a little bit more your your concept of the middle class? Because this middle class concept was a concept of American sociology to counter this class class concept of, of the left. So on one on the second, uh, if, if you ask the Germans, it was done a research in Germany, they ask who belongs to the middle class. So 80% of the people say they belong to, to, the, to the middle class, whereas I think 30% belong to really the working poor. So that means even working poor people interpret themselves as they are members of the middle class. And, but on a whole, on more objective sizes, well, one can say that the middle class is, is declining. It's declining in, in, in Italy, it's declining in Spain, it's declining everywhere. So it would be, what you say here, that the middle class is going up, is increasing. Or is it just a, a more an ideological way of looking to the society? It's one. Second one, I think, it is very difficult to to understand Poland without without n having knowledge of what happened before the 70s. That this country really started at 45 or 50s, really from zero. I think the, the, the experience the Polish people had with the war and the Russians has nothing to do with the experience that the English had, the French had, and the Italian had. The concept of war was a, is a completely different one. So the French started from with, with a country which was not at all destroyed, even the Germans not. So it was a wonder for me, I'm, I'm a foreigner too, it was a wonder for me how this country managed up to the 70s to repair this country, to rebuild it. And the conditions of rebuilding it had an influence of what was what, what was going on later on. Because always yeah, it's not it's not a I think that a certain period is ending and the other one starts. It is always reflected by the things they go into one into the other. And the last one is the last question is could you please tell me what do you think? Who is ruling at this moment this country? Because I'm looking around, I'm a sociologist too, I do not know. <laughs> For sure I can say who is not ruling. <laughs> We know, you yes. know. <laughs> uh, thank you for this question about the middle class. I think it is really important, and maybe I should uh, 
uh, put it more clearly in the lecture. Uh, uh, I was referring here to rather objective, uh, objectified criteria uh, distinguishing the middle class and, uh, and the working class. Uh, it, it is not the income which is the most important one. Uh, uh, I think that uh, I uh, used uh, uh, the reference to the um, to the form of work. When you work uh, by your hands, uh, when you have uh, when you are doing manual work, you can uh, even you can uh, uh, you can earn not a bad money for it. Like even when you are a worker, you can uh, earn uh, more than one thousand euro. But it uh, still, uh, of course, it is not uh, not often. Yeah? Uh, like uh, um, usually, you will earn uh, in just. Uh, uh, 1,050, uh, uh, 500 watts or something like that. Uh, uh, but the form of work is the most important uh, when it comes to distinguishing middle class from uh, from the working class. And uh, when we investigate the lifestyles, the dispositions of the people, it uh, um, one can see that uh, working class people or popular classes have totally different dispositions, different dispositions than middle class people. When we start from this form of work, and, uh, uh, for example, in, uh, for the popular classes, important element disposition is their familiarity, like being with others, being in a close ties. Um, forming uh, um, a group of close uh, of close people, not only family, many family, but not only. And uh, it means also that in the work uh, you are focusing not on career, but on having good relations with people when you are coming from the, uh, from the popular class. When you have uh, middle class people, you will have the whole idea of career. And so we are stepping uh, one. Uh, one step by another, and we want to improve our um, uh, our career. We want to build our um, data, etc. So, uh, uh, and uh, when I was saying that the middle class is rising, I was uh, presenting you uh, the increase of this uh, you know, non-manual uh, non-manual workers in the whole in the social structure, but I didn't. Uh, say one important thing. Uh, who are they? Or uh, what, uh, what is the reason that, uh, of that increase? And what is, asto uh, what is astonishing is that they were not, uh, the, the rise of the middle class was not fostered by the market. But more important here was the state. So those 25% of the middle class uh, is composed out of administrative officers, uh, nurses, uh, teachers, not by the special, not only by the specialist in peers, in enterprises. So those are the, the people related to public sector. But do you think a nurse who is earning one thousand two hundred floaties is really middle class? Uh, Yes, when it comes to, to, the, form, to, to imagine the form of work, she's uh, she's educated, uh, yeah, uh, educated. Uh, she has a responsibility, and when you ask them about uh, uh, their disposition, when you uh, make an interview, with them, you will see that, for example, uh, they think about their life in terms of career, and they want uh, to have children. Uh, sent to uh, to the studies so, yeah, so uh, they uh, they have uh, aspirations different to, uh, to the people uh, from the uh, from the popular class okay. of course it, uh, some some layers of the social of the class structure uh, are blurred yeah? so uh, there is this gray zone between uh, classes and when, it's, uh, when it comes to the upper Stratas of the working class and lower stratas of the uh, of the middle class, you will always have some learned lines. Uh, 
Uh, uh, but I, I would uh, I would defend this. Uh, the nurses belonging to the academic class. Thank you for the lecture. Uh, you said that uh, middle class is the new danger class. There are the people who can start the revolution, but what they have in uh, common, what create a group for them? Because they are very different people. They are, let's say, the nurse, they are people from government sector, they are people from free market zone, they work as a special specialist. Uh, there are some people who work uh, as a precariat. So, what kind of idea can bring them together to create? Because very often, most of these people don't want to change uh, what we are here because they won't have uh, only better position. No revolution is needed for this. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, um, that's a crucial question, in fact. Uh, what makes. Uh, what makes what, is, uh, what makes an actor in uh, our uh, 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 I would say that uh, uh, the idea of order is here uh, uh, kind of uh, um, matching idea. Uh, the, uh, they are, of course, they have aspirations. They are different. But they, they are thinking about themselves in terms of career, their yeah, individual career. But uh, in the same moment, uh, they are very inclined to think in terms of uh, establishing an order, uh, order in their lives, but also order work. Uh, so that if they see that uh, uh, healthcare is not functioning, uh, they want to have a well, uh, well organized, uh, well ordered. Uh, 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 healthcare. Of course, they can, uh, and this is a kind of danger, they, they can go uh, or they, they can uh, uh, accept the marketization if they uh, see it as a, as, a, as a kind of benefit yeah, or, or a chance to make it uh, well ordered, uh, um, well ordered healthcare. And uh, uh, this is here comes the question of the alliances between the classes. I think that uh, I, I would uh, say that uh, today, uh, today's order, and maybe it refers to, to that question of who, who governs Poland. Uh, uh, nowadays, middle class here is rather alliance with the upper class. I'd say with uh, with entrepreneurs uh, uh, and uh, middle class think uh, in. You know, important uh, fractions of the middle class think in terms of uh, getting closer uh, to, uh, to, uh, to entrepreneurs, be, uh, getting bigger, uh, um, getting prosperity, which is comparable to the prosperity of entrepreneurs, etc. Uh, I think that the possible, uh, that there is a possibility of changing of this alliance. If they see that, uh, for example, they, their life uh, relies on that, on that. Yeah? Uh, they, uh, that they, uh, uh, they are not in the rat race, uh, but uh, they are in the hamster race. Uh, <laughs> hamster, like this little creature, uh, which, uh, which you put, uh, when you put it, uh, when you have it on the cage, you are organizing the, uh, like the, the, this, yeah, this round uh, um, thing to, to play for it. And it enters this, uh, uh, this toy and goes uh, on and on inside of it. So that there is not enough not, not race in that. But uh, no, the, if, they, uh, uh, if they see their situation like that, uh, there is a possibility of changing of, uh, of the lines. Uh, I mean, uh, the middle class can. Uh, in, uh, Opt for uh, better public services. Like I think that uh, this is this in fact happens uh, in um, in city movements. I think that this is exactly uh, that. Yes. Like it starts from yeah. They are saying we are not uh, we are after uh, recognizing people's needs. Okay? We are about uh, uh, 
recognizing diversity. And when they say we want to recognize diversity, they don't mean, uh, first of all, um, uh, um, uh, uh, for example, uh, sexual minorities. They think, in, uh, first of all, by uh, recognizing the needs of the old, uh, uh, small uh, entrepreneurships, uh, yes, small commerce. They have a specific vision of this diversity. And I think that it is not impossible that the new, uh, new alliance, uh, middle and, uh, and lower class, popular class, will be established. Okay, last question. Do you think that we are able to write our history? Because you say we don't write our new history. We could have some narrative. It depends on the place uh, where people are and what they speak about, their own thinking about our history. But we don't have any um, popular vision of our history after Second World War. You say that the borderline for you is uh, 70s, yes, 1970s. I think it's, uh, we should start thinking about our new history after the war, and we need to create our uh, thinking about our state after war, after 89, and in, in my opinion, we need something like a uh, new opening, a new thinking about the history, because now we have something like 89, uh, everything was before is bad because that was the colonies and it destroyed our country or something like that. And after it might is wonderful because we are modern and this is another um, trap or um, way of thinking about modernization as a only good process for everyone. When we modernization, our state, our um, town that will give us better life. And after 25 years, we say it's not working, it's not only what we need. So yes, yes, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Okay. That's what I, what I tried to do. In fact, I do what I would be trying to do in next year. Okay, and you try to do it, and somebody else in Poland try to do it. Uh, there is a uh, there is an important book which uh, which I don't agree, but I think it is important anyway. Uh, the book of uh, Andrzej Leder. Uh, 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 how to translate it? The uh, dreamed uh, revolution, or, uh, overslept revolution, uh, uh, and it considers uh, uh, the change which occurred under uh, Stalinism, but also under uh, uh, during the World War II. And, uh, his thesis is that uh, uh, the revolution in Poland occurred uh, without uh, real Polish mobilization, but others. Uh, organized it, did it. And, uh, first Germans uh, by organizing Holocaust, and then Russians by organizing industrialization and uh, nationalization. And, of course, I'm oversimplifying here, but uh, I think that this process of rewriting of the history started, in fact. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for spending your time so long.